Good afternoon. This is a detailed tropical weather update on Tropical Storm Eric for Tuesday, June 17th, 2025. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone and making any decisions regarding Tropical Storm Eric, please consult the National Hurricane Center, your local weather officials, and your local weather office for the latest information for where you are. So to start off the video, here's a look at the latest GOES-19 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery over Tropical Storm Eric. And we can see that the system has definitely become much better organized since we made a video on this yesterday where it was a lot more disorganized, although we did have some swirling patterns yesterday. Today, it is definitely a lot more better defined here on the imagery. We can see that there does appear to be an inner core structure that is partially formed here on the western side of the circulation that is attempting to wrap all the way around but is failing to do so due to the fact that we do have a little bit of drier air than the surrounding that is working its way into the system. This is typical for a system that is going to undergo some rapid intensification where it tends to pull in some drier air from the surrounding. This is not super dry, and this is going to likely mix out by the overnight hours tonight. And once a inner core becomes well established here, we are likely to see Eric undergo some very quick to rapid intensification up until landfall. Now, I can prove that to you when we take a look here at a microwave satellite pass that just came in about 30 minutes ago before recording this video, and we can see that we do have a very intense convective band trying to wrap all the way around and close off. And we definitely have a well-defined eye on a microwave satellite pass here, not necessarily on a visible satellite imagery from the satellite, but we do have a much better defined eye that is trying to develop here. Here's another channel showing you something a little different, but pretty much similar here, showing us that that system is trying to consolidate very quickly here with the convection trying to wrap all the way around and close off. And once this inner core structure closes off and becomes well solidified, we are likely to see Eric undergo some explosive strengthening up until landfall in near Alcapoco, Mexico in the next 48 to 60 hours. The only intensity estimate that we have until we get a TDR mission in there from NOAA is from satellite. So this is a satellite intensity estimate and we can see that there is definitely a solid fetch here of 50 to 60 mile an hour winds just to the north of the circulation. So this is definitely showing signs of quick strengthening. And once this tropical storm force wind field wraps all the way around, which it has not done so quite yet, that's why the inner cord here is well muted on the southeastern side where we don't have much wind at all because we don't have a lot of rainfall to transport all that wind down to the surface versus on the northern side is where we have the strongest showers and thunderstorms and where we have the strongest winds taking place. But nonetheless, this is a pretty organized tropical storm and it is strengthening rather quickly. So with that being said, let's take a look at our latest H-Wharf model. This is a specific hurricane model used only for hurricanes and it is a meso model. So we can be better predict on how strong Eric is actually going to get here between this model and a few other hurricane models that I'm gonna show you in this video. So let's take a look here at over the next 24 hours. And as you can see here, Eric will continue to strengthen and intensify overnight tonight throughout Wednesday morning with it perhaps becoming a hurricane as early as tomorrow here based on the wharf model that we're looking at with a central pressure of about 978 millibars. This is going to continue to strengthen at a very quick rate. Not as quick as what I'm about to show you on the HMON has A and B runs. So this is a more conservative forecast from the wharf. But it, it even shows here winds getting very close to major hurricane status in about 54 hours. This would be for Thursday early morning, early afternoon, or Thursday late morning, early afternoon. With a pressure down to about 965 millibars and a look at that hurricane force wind field, that is pretty darn in, intact, pretty well uniform, and that allows the hurricane to intensify even quicker with winds here around 110 miles an hour. Now, this is going to make landfall very close or around um, 
Alcapoco, Mexico, right around the 66 hour mark. So we're looking at about late Thursday into early Friday morning here. So keep in mind that the landfall time here is going to be subject to change substantially because this is either going to brush the coastline of Mexico or make a actual landfall. And right now, it is more than likely to make landfall as far as I can see. Now, the HMON model is much more stronger on this hurricane or on this tropical storm than what the wharf was showing you. And so you can see here in about 24 hours. So by Wednesday morning, this is definitely a hurricane on this particular model. That purple color indicates hurricane force winds. As we put this into motion, the hurricane continues to gain intensity throughout the day on Wednesday into early Thursday. And then by Thursday early morning here, this would be a major hurricane with 115 or 111 plus mile an hour winds. You can see the beige colors here. Um, taking note of that, that's about 119 knots. That is a category four hurricane Eric here. So this has a very high ceiling of rapid intensification as it gets very close or on top of Alcapoco, Mexico within about 25 miles from it. So and that would be for Thursday morning here or Thursday late morning into the early afternoon hours. So roughly Thursday into early Friday, we're looking at a landfall time here. And the HMON also very bullish on the rainfall totals, which is more than likely going to happen here. Wait until I show you the rainfall forecast from the NHC. And you can see very, very heavy rainfall approaching the southeastern coast here of Mexico. Puerto Escadito, as well as Acapulco, Mexico, getting some big time rainfall and flooding out of this. Landslides, rock slides, um, catastrophic damage is certainly a very big possibility with this. I don't like to hype up things. I don't like to um, panic you all, but this is a big deal. Very, very heavy rainfall hitting the tall mountains here of the Sierra Madres in Mexico. And this is going to continue over the next three days, as you can see here with really heavy rainfall hitting the coastline there of southern and southeastern Mexico. Now, I did promise that I wanted to show you all the halves A and B runs very close to Mexico here. And as you can see, this would be a major hurricane since winds of at least 100 knots are at least 115 miles an hour, making this a major Category 3 hurricane very close as it makes landfall here near Acapulco and Puerto Escadito, Mexico. Now, this is a lot further to the east than what we saw on the HMON and H Wharf models. The Habs B is also similar in that sense that it also shows a major hurricane here with 115 plus mile an hour winds. And that also makes landfall very close to Puerto Escadito in Mexico. So this is a Pretty serious situation unfolding, and everyone along the coast here needs to be taking this very seriously. Now, how strong will Tropical Storm Eric get over the next 36 to 48 hours? Well, looking at the latest model intensity guidance here, and this is the blend of both the National Hurricane Center models as well as the, um, the hurricane models, and we can clearly see that most of them do call this to become definitely a hurricane, that's for sure possibly a category two hurricane. Therefore, my intensity forecast is just below major hurricane intensity here because I don't want to jump the gun yet just due to the fact that a inner core structure is forming, but it's not completely closed off yet. And those are very tricky to pinpoint on when they close off. So therefore, until an inner core structure solidifies and closes off, this is going to end up being probably a category two hurricane with winds of at least 95 to 105 miles an hour, even 110 perhaps. And that's what the National Hurricane Center actually shows for right now until I update it here in about 10 minutes. Okay, so that's what we're seeing. Now, taking a look at the spaghetti plot here from Tropical Tidbits, and they did put, uh, or he did put a huge important notice here Please do not use this map to make um, decisions. Please seek official info. And that is because a spaghetti plot is not a actual 100% forecast, and this is likely to have some wiggle room with it. Still in all, this could deviate still to the left 
or deviate still to the right. And I'll show you a scenario on that here in just a second. But you can see most of the spaghetti plots are aiming squarely either towards Puerto Escondido, Mexico, or Acapulco, Mexico, those two major areas uh, where a lot of people live. So please take this seriously. And even some models um, still keep this all the way into Porto or, or uh, Puerto Vallarta and Mazalan, Mexico, which is also a very populated area. So going to be hitting a very populated area here across this whole region. So even so, it's going to make landfall here. Impacts will be felt way far away from the center. This is the latest forecast from Tropical Tidbits. And as you can see here, definitely a strong system, but we could also see some scenarios here keeping this offshore off of Mexico while plenty of them still show this impacting directly onshore of Puerto Escondido and Acapulco, Mexico over the next um, 48 to 60 hours. And another tool that I like to show you all in this video is how or what is the background state looking like or the environmental factors that are going to lead to rapid intensification with Tropical Storm Eric. And so this is the ship's forecast, which stands for Statistical Hurricane Intensity Prediction System. I will repeat that one last time. SHIPS stands for Statistical Hurricane Intensity Prediction System system so it's basically giving us an idea based on wind shear sea surface temperatures moisture content and upper ocean heat content on what environmental factors will lead eric to do of becoming so right now uh, the factors are very light uh, vertical wind shear generally under 10 knots that's very light okay sea surface temperatures that are near are pretty much ideal for rapid intensification about 29 to 30 celsius and very high moisture content in the deep layer here 85 percent over the next couple of days that is as high as you can get with a hurricane like this and on top of that we have upper ocean heat content that is going to play a role in all of this so all these factors put together here yield a potential intensity here that is very high on the order of about 110 all the way up to maybe even 125 miles an hour. So that would be category two to category three intensity. And it doesn't surprise me if this even gets higher based on what we're seeing. Given the fact that over the next 48 hours, there is a 72% a chance that winds increase to 55 knots from where they're at right now. So if you put about roughly 45 knots plus 55 knots so let's do a quick math equation here so 45 knots plus so 45 knots plus 55 knots equals 100 knots or about 115 miles an hour so that's what we expect for this system and in my personal opinion based on this i am going to be conservative here but i am leaning towards a major hurricane here unfortunately as it gets very close or makes landfall here on Acapulco and Puerto Escondido, Mexico. And the maximum potential intensity with this system is in theory 162 to 163 knots, which is more intense than Milton put together. So with that being said, this is a look at the three o'clock Central Standard Time advisory on Tropical Storm Kirk from the National Hurricane Center and they still keep this underneath major hurricane intensity in their forecast with winds that peak at 110 miles per hour here for 12 a.m. Thursday. But I just showed you some of the hurricane models, how they are slightly higher than this. So it remains in question if this does become our first major hurricane of the East Pacific hurricane season of this year or if this is just going to be a strong high-end category two with 110 miles an hour. Regardless of how strong this is, there are hurricane watches, hurricane warnings, tropical storm warnings out for Puerto Escondido, as well as Acapulco, Mexico, near Salina Cruz and Tehuantepec, Mexico as well. And extreme to life-threatening as well as catastrophic impacts are anticipated with this system. 
So now the arrival time or most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds are as follows here. As you can see, there is a 70 to 90% chance that tropical storm force winds will be impacting the southeastern coast here of Mexico, Tehuantepec, as well as Puerto Escondido, Acapulco, Mexico, where tropical storm force winds there arrive by Wednesday night into early, early Thursday morning. Now, when we take a look at our a rainfall forecast from the National Hurricane Center. This is very, very concerning, and this is why I cannot, cannot say this enough, that catastrophic rainfall is expected here, especially uh, around the southeastern coast here of Mexico, including there for, again, Tehuantepec region, expecting 16 to 20 inches of rainfall Locally higher amounts, up to two feet of rainfall cannot be ruled out, especially in the rainiest prone areas where upslope flow, where all the moisture gets squeezed out. We could be looking at total devastation here with this amount of rainfall over the higher elevations of Mexico. Much lesser rainfall totals, though, in Guerrero as well as Jalisco. Can't even speak Spanish here. Uh, Colombia. I uh, expecting about one to three inches of rainfall. Okay. So you need to take this seriously. Guatemala, as well as El Salvador, expecting anywhere between two to four inches of rainfall. So indirect impacts there, not much from the wind, but some of the outer bands and some of the enhanced rainfall features um, are likely to cause problems there. Last but not least, key messages here. Eric is expected to rapidly intensify before reaching the coast of southern Mexico on Thursday, and, can, and a hurricane warning is in effect for these areas. Her, um, Tropical Storm Eric will produce very heavy rainfall across portions of Central America and southwestern Mexico through this week. Life-threatening flooding, mudslides are possible, especially in areas of steep terrain. A dangerous storm surge is also expected to produce coastal flooding near and to the east of where the center passes and crosses the coast in areas of onshore winds. So we're looking at a dangerous storm surge combined with freshwater flooding due to up to maybe two feet of rainfall. Man, this is a really bad situation, and I really, really hope and pray that you all take this seriously. We do not want any fatalities from a hurricane that is this strong. Now, with that being said, if you did find this tropical weather outlook and discussion on Tropical Storm Eric very detailed, informative, and very helpful and life-saving, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that like button, ring the bell notification icon, share this video with their family and friends on social media, leave a comment, and also check me out on social media where I will be doing some updates on this throughout the next 24 to 36 hours. And also, we might be live streaming on this if necessary tomorrow night, as long as this remains a very big threat. Might even go live tonight. We'll just have to see on how things pan out here. But if you have not yet, please subscribe, and I'll keep you all updated if necessary on Tropical Storm Eric as it undergoes some rapid intensification in the next 24 to 36 hours.